Welcome back to Surviving a Pandemic. It's day two and we have some exciting sessions planned for you. Facebook, YouTube and WhatsApp all have one thing in common. There's so much fake news about what you can do to fight off COVID-19 and improve your health. But I don't want you to worry because our next speaker, Rainier, has got you covered. He's going to take us through biblical principles to fighting COVID-19 or any viral infection. He has several years of experience as a health presenter and runs his own YouTube channel with his wife, Chantal. He's also been featured on multiple TV networks because of his expertise in health. This is going to be a good one, guys. Don't miss out. Also, don't forget, like the page, like the video and share with your friends and family. We want as many people as possible to get help. And then also, don't forget, in the description, there's a link to your free gift. We have extra content available that's going to help you. All you have to do is sign up. It'll take five seconds. And now let's listen to Rainier as he takes us through the topic on biblical principles to fight COVID-19. Surviving a pandemic. How to boost your immune system during COVID-19. In this session, we are going to look at nutritional principles that are made very practical that will help you in boosting your immune system. But before we go into it, I first would like to give you some background about myself when it comes to health. I myself was very overweight and unhealthy. Then I learned about the biblical principles that you can apply to be live a healthier life. Some of the principles that I would share with you in this current video. And as you can see, here's a photo of myself when I got married. I lost a lot of weight compared to the person that I was before. What I want to share with you are the eight health laws. These eight health laws can be summarized in the acronym NEW START. Now, what does this acronym stand for? The N stands for nutrition, the E for exercise, the W for water, the S for sunshine, T for temperance, A for air, R for rest, and T for trusting in God. It is very important for us to understand that 80% of your immune system is within your gut. So what you eat is vitally important. So that's why we're going to look at principles in this video that you can apply that will boost your immune system because you're going to treat your gut in a kind way. We're going to apply health principles that health professionals have discovered that will help your gut to be more healthy. Principle number one is that you need to eat a good breakfast. You see, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. But yet, when we look at society, which meal is most important? It is supper, your dinner. But yet, your breakfast is your most important meal of the day. Breakfast, you need to eat like a king. Your lunch needs to be like a prince and your supper like a pauper. Why? Why do we eat? That's the question we need to ask. The reason why we eat is so that we can have energy so that we can have nutrients. If I give my best food to my body just before I sleep, I don't need energy to sleep. I need energy to get through the day. Therefore, I give the best food to my body in the morning and I eat like a king because I need energy to go through the day. Also, when I eat a good breakfast, it's a slow release of energy. Because if I eat the wrong breakfast, that's why emphasis is on a good breakfast. If I eat a wrong breakfast, an unhealthy breakfast, then my blood sugar will spike. It will come down. They've actually discovered that if I do that to my body, that's when most crimes take place. When your blood sugar spikes and then falls and falls below normal. But if I give my body a good breakfast and the sugar release is gradual, then I will have a good output and I will have a better day. Yeah, I will have energy for the day. I will have a greater outwork, work output when I do this. Also, when I have a good breakfast, it will give me a sustained mental alertness, which is important. I will have better endurance. I will have fewer down feelings, especially during this pandemic. How many people are down and depressed? Well, let's put health principles in place, at least so that it can help me to feel better. I know I might still be depressed or down or whatever because I've lost my job or whatever has happened due to this pandemic. You might even have COVID-19. But the point is, I need to do as much as I can within my means to improve my mental state. And eating a good breakfast will help with it. Your breakfast, when you eat it, is sufficient. 
when you are not hungry before your lunch. So when it's a good breakfast, and we'll still look at what a good breakfast will look like, when I eat a good breakfast, it will have to sustain me until lunch. I mustn't be hungry before the time. And when I say that, I presume that you're drinking enough water between your breakfast and your lunch, because many times we're hungry because we are not drinking water. So if you're drinking water, you're eating a good breakfast, yet you're hungry before lunch. I'm not talking about a half an hour before. I'm talking about a couple of hours before lunch or an hour or so before lunch. You need to add to your breakfast to make sure that you are not hungry before lunch. Now, some of you might say, how, how can I make a quality breakfast? I know, I, let's say I need to make my own porridge and not buy the cereals in the shop anymore because they're bad for you. It's got sugar in it, it's refined. How can I make a proper porridge? If I don't have time, you have to get up early in the morning, get the kids ready, get them to school or whatever needs to happen in your daily life. I know it's different during COVID-19, but yet so many of us are still busy, especially with the lockdown now being lifted to level number three. How can I make a proper porridge when I don't have time in the morning? Well, here in this next video that I'm adding into this, my wife will show you how to make a hot pot. You put in a porridge the evening before, you put it in a pot into a box, the next morning it's, it's ready to be used, ready to be eaten, and it's still warm. So watch this video, my wife will show you practically how to make your own hot box. Have you been finding it a challenge to make yourself a nourishing breakfast in the morning because you just don't have the time? Well, I want to share with you a way that you can make a three grain porridge the night before to make sure that you start your day on a healthy breakfast. For your three grain porridge, you can choose three of the following grains. Oats, Millie Mill, Maltabella, Whole Barley, Whole Wheat, Millet, Brown Rice, Buckwheat and Quinoa. All of these grains you can find at your local supermarket. If you can't find it in your local supermarket, ask someone to stock it in your local supermarket. Today I've chosen to use the following three grains. I've decided to use some brown rice, some millet and some rolled oats. The recipe for my three grain porridge is one cup of grains, three cups boiling water, one teaspoon of salt and fruits according to your taste. At the end of this demonstration, you will find a list of the ratio between the amount of grains and the amount of water that you need to use. I have found that using one cup of grain is sufficient for my family of two. But you might be a family of five and would have to increase your recipe. And the ratio between the grains and the water will help you to know how much to add of what. For my recipe today, I've decided to use a third cup of each of these three grains. So in total, they will make one cup grain. Before you start your three grain porridge on the stove, you will need to assemble your hot box. And for this, you will need three pick and pay cooler bags. So just go down to your pick and pay and purchase three of these bags and you will be able to make your own hot box at home. So what you will need to do is you take your first bag you take the second one and you put it inside your first one. Make sure that you press it down to the bottom nice and tight and open it up so that it fits in perfectly. Then you take your third one, you put that in as well. I always make sure that the, the cover is, is outside. Also tucking it in nice and tight, opening it up so it fits perfectly and as you will see all three of the tops are on the same side and on the outside then you take a plate from your kitchen you turn it upside down and you place it in your hot box bag nice and tight you're going to put a hot pot into these bags so the plate will protect your bags from not burning then you put your hot box aside ready to be used when you need it. Then you will need a pot on your stove. What we're going to do is we're going to first place in our grains. So it's my third cup of brown rice, my third cup of millet, my third cup of rolled oats, which in total makes one cup of grains. One teaspoon of sea salt. Then we're going to add three cups of boiling water.
Now we're going to add some fruit and the fruit can be anything that you like. The idea of the fruit is to sweeten the porridge to make it delicious for you to enjoy. On the deck we have some dried guavas, we've got some dates, some raisins, some apples and some bananas. For today's recipe I'm going to add one cup chopped dates and I'm also going to add one sliced banana. As I said, anything that you find delicious in your three grain. So then you just stir everything through well so that your salt can dissolve. You put your lid on and you put your stove on. Now what we want to do is we want to bring this to boiling point. Once it is boiling you can open up the lid, you stir it once through, put the lid back on and then you wait for the steam to come out from the sides. When you are cooking with harder grains such as sorghum, wheat and barley, you want to keep your pot on the stove for at least 10 minutes to cook before you put it into your hot box. But because we are using softer grains today like rice and millet and oats etc, we can now just wait for the steam to come out from the side and we put it into our hot box. So you as my viewer have to pretend now that you are seeing the steam coming out of my pot. So then we take the pot and we place it into the hot box bag onto the plate. Make sure it's nice and tight. Then what you need to do is you need to seal each individual bag. So you zip it up, you tie the handles, you take the next one, you zip it up, fold the handles in, and then you take your last one, and you zip that up too. These handles keep your bags in place. Then what you will need is you'll take a nice thick warm blanket from your home. Open it up. Put your hot box inside. Let's do it this way. Basically wrap it nice and tight. There we go. And you leave it overnight to cook. Tomorrow morning when you open up your blanket and all your bags, you'll open up the pot and you'll have a nice warm porridge. All you need to do is, is just take a spoon and stir your pot nice through and then you have a delicious porridge for you to start your day with. What you can also do is, you can also purchase yourself a made hot box bag. It has a lid and it has a bag and all you do is you put your pot inside of here, put this on and then you close it up. These hot box bags can be purchased from Be Free Lifestyle Center. Just to show you the next morning, this is what your delicious three grain porridge would look like. And all you can do with this is, is add some fresh fruit and some toast. And then you have a delicious breakfast to start your day off. I'm Chantal Horn, reminding you to make healthy choices. Now isn't that amazing? Isn't that easy? That's very easy to do. Something else that you can do that's very nice, this is just a bonus, is to make a guava sauce to add to whatever you're eating. And this my wife will also show you how to do. Guava sauce is a delicious addition to your waffles, pancakes and fruit salad. And I want to show you a quick way of how you can make guava sauce in the comfort of your home. The recipe is a quarter cup water, one cup guavas, and two bananas. 
So for this recipe you will need your blender. So we are going to just put in our ingredients. Our water. Two bananas. If you don't have a very strong blender, you might want to chop your bananas a little bit finer than what I am doing right now. And then your guavas. With this blender, you get a blending stick and I find it works very well when I use it when making my guava sauce. Okay, so then what you would need is a bowl with a sieve inside and then you take your sauce and you throw it into the sieve because what we want to do now is we want to get the pips out so that you have a smooth guava sauce. So all you need to do is you literally shake the sauce out and sometimes you might find that there are some pips that stay behind so you can then just use a spoon to get all the last sauce out all right so let's just quickly put that aside today I have for you a already made waffle here that we're going to decorate with some guava sauce. If you are interested in wanting to know how to make waffles, you're welcome to send us an email and we can share the recipe with you. On the deck we have some peanut butter, honey and coconut that we'll use to decorate the waffle. So let's start by adding some peanut butter onto the waffle. You can add as much peanut butter as you like or as little. You can even use some other nut butters. And even if you don't like nut butters, you don't have to use it at all. Decorating your waffle is completely up to you. All right. Let's add some honey. You can even add some nuts with your waffle. And of course, you can add some fruit salad on it. Today we're going to use some banana to put on top. Let's take a banana and slice some banana on top of our waffle. Even if you had some maple syrup in the house, maple syrup really is very delicious with a waffle even some strawberries or if you can make yourself a cashew cream that's also really delicious so then I would put on some guava sauce as you can see the guava sauce is nice and smooth so we'll just put on as much as you would like. And then we'll sprinkle on some coconut. And your delicious waffle is served. I am Chantal Horn reminding you to make healthy choices. Wow, that looks fantastic. That is amazing. That's so easy it is, my friends. Now, something that is very important to add to your diet, into your breakfast, to strengthen your gut, is powerful superfoods like dark leafy greens. Why is it important? Because they alkalize the body systems. They provide vitamins and nutrients. They increase energy levels. 
They help you to detoxify. They help to prevent disease during this pandemic. Powerful Superfoods helps you to prevent disease. It will promote good health. And most importantly, this is what we're talking about this weekend. It will improve your immune system. Now, once again, you might say, but I don't like dark leafy greens. I don't like these raw foods. Can't you give it to me in a nicer way? Well, praise the Lord for what we're going to share with you next. My wife is going to show you how to make a green smoothie. That's fantastic. It tastes brilliantly, yet you're getting all the benefits of greens in it. So watch this video. Okay, so for our next recipe, I'm going to show you how to make a green smoothie. So the recipe is on the screen. You're welcome to write it down as we make the recipe. So firstly, we're going to start with our water again. I always like to start with my water because it helps everything to just blend nice and easily. So you will notice that it's a lot less water than our previous recipe because we are now going to make a more of a smooth texture, a thicker texture than our green drink. And it's exactly what it is. The one is a drink and the one is a smoothie. So we're trying to create that. Then we're going to add bananas. And I just want to say that these recipes are only recommendations. You don't have to follow them as is. You can play around and make them more palatable. You can add other fruits. You can add guavas. You can add apples. So play around. These are just a suggestion. I love to add bananas and dates because in my, in my opinion, they are the superfoods in the fruit group. They really, they, their sugars are such good sugars to have. And they pro the, the sugar that they provide is they also give you energy. So that's why I like to use bananas and dates. Okay, so then we're going to add two dates. I'm just going to add, for the love of it, two more. <laughs> okay, then I just want to show you, you see the recipe asks for four tablespoons of soaked seed. So in this container here, I have dried linseed. So what I just did is I took my linseed that, are, that is dried and I added it into the jar. It's very important to make sure you only add it half full. Because what we are going to do is, is we're going now to take some water and we're going to fill up the jar. And then I close the lid. And just shake it a bit so that everything is soaked. And then you put this into the fridge. If you do this the night before or even the morning, this, I did this last night, and this morning it looks like this. So now you have a full jar of linseed. And now basically why this is so important is because it's already in a sprouted form now. You know, when, we, when you do sprouting, you use seeds and legumes and those kind of things, and you soak them, and then when they sprout, they are what we call nutrient-dense food. So it's a superfood. And so that's why I like to use my linseed soaked in this recipe because now I am using a sprouted linseed. So I have extra nutrition in, in my smoothie. And also the, the linseed soaked is very beneficial for the bowels. So adding it to this recipe, make sure that you stay regular and that your bowels move along smoothly. And just because they are sprouted, it, you know when you sprout when you soak linseed, they become like jelly. They become all, uh, maybe I could say gooey kind of thing. And, and that actually helps them to stick to the bowels in order to actually clean the bowels out. So we're adding them for nutrient, but also for medicinal purposes. So we are going to add four tablespoons of our soaked linseed. They, they interesting enough, actually add to the texture as well of our smoothie. All right, now we're going to add some of our greens. So I'm going to add some rocket again. And then I'm going to add, it says a handful of leafy greens. You'll see that it's less than what the green smoothie, uh, the green drink was. This is because with the green drink, as I said, we are doing that for detoxifying purposes, cleansing purposes. So we make the fruit less, but we make the nutrients and the minerals more. Okay. I think I must just make that like a little handful because I want to just add some of the wheatgrass. 
And I picked this from my garden this morning on the, before we came here, so it's nice and fresh. <laughs> okay, so now we're just going to blend. So I just want to show you that if you look at the consistency, it's a lot thicker than what the green drink is. Uh, you can play around with your smoothie texture. You can make it even more runnier or you can make it even more thicker. It depends on what you like. I prefer a more of a runnier smoothie because I like to drink it and get it done basically. But if you like a more thicker one to put over your fruit salad or your granola, then you can do it as well. And it smells good. <laughs> so these are two simple recipes that I felt I just wanted to share with you today. Ways that you can actually incorporate greens more into your diet and in your lifestyle. And I promise you, you'll feel better. Not that I'm saying you feel sick, but you'll just feel better. You'll feel healthier. You'll have more energy. You'll actually, as we've started off, we, we read from scripture how important the herbs and the vegetables are, especially the herbs. So by having this, you're actually helping your body to be healthy and helping your body to function optimally. And then along with that, you are actually making your body more alkaline and you get the benefit of the good flavor and the delicious meal that you are having. Now we love a green smoothie in our house. It's really a fantastic thing. My boys love it. When they drink it, you just see the green all over their mouth. So principle number one is, you need to eat a good breakfast. Principle number two, don't eat between meals. Your stomach needs time to recover. The effects of your eating between meals affects your appetite. And therefore you don't really want to eat the next day. Think about it. If I eat in between meals, um, or let me do it this way. Let me explain to you how your stomach works. Your stomach likes the new food that comes in. So if I give it a good breakfast at seven o'clock and at nine o'clock I'm at work, I'm eating a, a chocolate or chips or whatever someone is offering to me or I'm taking it out of my bag, then my stomach is going to stop with the food that is already in it. And it's going to start with the new food that's coming in. So then, by the time I get to lunch, this snack that I had is digested, but not my breakfast. Therefore, I've got old food in it. Now I give it lunch. At lunch, my stomach then starts with the new food again, with the lunch. And the breakfast is still there. By the time I get to supper, my breakfast isn't properly digested. I still got food in my stomach. I give it my supper. I go to bed. And what happens to food that lies in a hot, wet place? It ferments. And therefore, some people will get heartburn and we get many symptoms. And the next morning when I wake up, because my stomach has gone to sleep with me, I'm not really hungry and it directly affects the meal the next morning and I don't really want a good breakfast. Do you see how important it is not to eat in between meals? Remember, your immune system, most of it is in your gut. Therefore, if you eat in between meals, you're affecting digestion. What will also happen if you eat in between meals? You pick up weight, as many people have during the pandemic. You know, some have discovered, they did a scientific discovery um, uh, experiment this last eight weeks of the, the lockdown. And that is that the pandemic increases weight gain. And that is true for many of us if we have not exercised strictly during this time. It will also end up in a loss of nutrients if you eat in between meals, which will directly affect your immune system too. And you need to eat. Now you're going to ask me, about me, what is not eating in between meals? How far should it be apart? Well, if you eat at eight o'clock or seven o'clock in the morning, at least four to five, some up to six hours before you eat again. So for us in our family, we eat at seven o'clock in the morning at two o'clock in the afternoon. So we've, and let's say we're done by quarter to eight. So it's nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two. It's at least six hours for us between our meals. Make sure that I'm, I'm my, my stomach has, has cleaned itself and I'm ready and it's restored so I can eat my next meal. Principle number three, don't eat late at night. 
it's not the best for your stomach and your 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 gut once again where your immune system is it gives you indigestion when the food is not properly digested it will ferment you will have weight gain it will affect your appetite for the next day and it affects sleep and you will dream a lot some of us wonder why do i dream a lot it's because you're eating pasta and pizza before you go to bed your stomach sleeps with you so you sit with this fermented food inside of your stomach and then we wonder why am i gaining weight why do i do not sleep uh, good enough why do i feel sluggish the next morning when i wake up why do i feel irritated because of all the food we eat just before we go to bed so when should we stop eating at least two to three hours before you go to bed and when you do eat at night keep it small don't make it large it's best to have only two meals per day actually if you're not someone that works hard but if you're in an office or something like that then you don't need a big third meal at night make it small some fruits a sandwich just something small so that you can uh, make sure you get a good night's rest so in my family we eat two meals a day my boys they have a third one at six o'clock at least two hours before they go to bed or actually finally fall asleep and for uh, my wife and I we like to keep it to once a week where we have a special night together where we eat something together but the rest of the time we stick to two meals a day now if you've done it let's say two or three times a week and you didn't keep to the two meals a day you know it's not the end of the world you might think about how am I gonna last until the next morning you eat a good meal your lunch is good our main meal is our lunch if that is a good meal then you won't need another meal so therefore I'm not hungry at night I only hungry the next morning when I woke up wake up so once again it is important that I eat the right kind of foods so we still look at that in these two sessions we will look at it what are the kind of foods that you need to eat so that you can make sure you're not as hungry that it's nutrient dense whole foods so that you can be healthy principle number four eat slowly and well digestion starts in the mouth and if you've got my personality you've got the next thing on your list to do and you're always in a hurry but you need to slow down your stomach does not have teeth <laughs> can you believe that yes it doesn't that's why you have teeth you need to digest digestion starts in the mouth a healthy gut equals a healthy body so if you help your gut by chewing well you will have a healthy body you will absorb more nutrients when you chew well you will maintain a healthy weight because you're gonna eat less when you chew well and it's good for your teeth so many people have teeth problems today and it's because they're not chewing well, well that's one of the reasons at least it's not just what we eat but how we eat now the next principle is we need to eat a variety of foods it's very important but not at one meal we don't need six seven eight varieties in one place why once again it affects your digestion which has an influence on your immune system it is hard to digest a big variety it also will lead to weight gain you need to eat four maximum five different dishes at one meal what would that look like so you have your salad very important you eat your salad first your raw food it will then help with digestion the enzymes to start being activated then you eat your vegetables you've got your starch you've got your protein there you've got four you don't really need much more than that I've seen at church potlucks how people come together man and they and the ladies will put out all their different kinds of foods and the men they will come with Mount Everest on their plate they've dished off everything instead of just choosing wisely and keeping yourself healthy in the moment it is very important principle number six don't drink with your meals why because it reduces the flow of saliva with its digestive enzymes now once again if you have done it or you do it every now and then it's not the end of the world but for your norm your custom is not to do it it spoils my meal I've gotten so used to it not to do it that it actually spoils my meal if I drink something with my meal so it reduces the flow of saliva with its digestive enzymes once again what does it affect your digestion where's your immune system most of it in your gut it dilutes the hydrochloric acid in the stomach and that you need once again to digest your food 
Digestion takes much longer when you drink with your meals. So therefore you need to space your lunch and your breakfast further apart. And food in the stomach will then ferment. Once again, it affects digestion. So when should you drink then when it comes to your meals? Stop 30 minutes before your meal time and only drink one hour later again. My body has gotten so used to it, you might think, oh, that's gonna be so difficult. Once you start to do it, you train your body. An hour after lunch or breakfast, you start drinking water. And my body tells me that. An hour after I've eaten, they, my body will tell me, I'm thirsty. Then I give it water. And water is vitally important, as you will hear in, the seminar, in these seminars this weekend. Principle number seven, don't mix fruits and veggies at the same meal. Why? Because it interferes with digestion once again. Have you guys noticed what we're touching on in this session? How important is digestion? Because it has to do with your gut and that has to do with your immune system and we're trying to fight COVID-19. So let's apply correct principles so we can fight it. So if I mix fruits and veggies, it will interfere with digestion. Food will ferment once again in the stomach. Veggies take longer to digest, three to four hours, where fruits only take one to two hours. So eat your fruits with your breakfast and eat your veggies with your lunch and your light supper. Obviously you have neutral foods that take two to three hours to digest. But when it comes to fruits and veggies, it is very important to, as your norm, as your custom, to have a gap in between. Some fruits and veggies are neutral and can be used with veggies or fruits, like your cucumbers, your herbs, your lettuce, your sprouts, tomatoes, watercress, avocados, olives. Some of these are neutral, but your major veggies do not eat it with your fruits as it will affect your digestion. Principle number eight, regularity. Try and eat at the same time every day. Go to sleep at the same time every day. Your body functions best on routine. So give it a routine by eating at the same time, sleeping at the same time, because your body functions best when you do it. These principles that I've shared with you in this video will help you to live a healthier and fuller life. If you apply them, start with one. If you look at them, you say, oh, eight principles. I need to apply one, two, what can I do? Start with one, start with two of them. Do it gradually, add them to your lifestyle. And you would say, and this is not a diet, by the way. It's a lifestyle. It means this is the norm. This is how we do it. This is what we do in our household. If we, for one evening, let's say our family took us out for dinner, or my wife and I, we went out for a, a date night, and I bought a, a something to drink because it's date night, and we drank it, and it's 10 minutes before we eat. You know, it's not the end of the world, even though we try not to do it. It's still not the end of the world if you did. Then you just come back to your custom the next day. So apply these principles. See how you feel. Concentrate tomorrow morning when you wake up after your big meal. Supper, just before you went to bed. Monday night, reduce it to a couple of fruits and make your lunch bigger. Make your lunch your main meal. And see how you feel the next morning. You will see, wow, my brain is clearer. I feel so much better. I promise you, I've been doing this for 12 years. I'm talking from experience. It is the healthiest thing to do to apply these principles. A big thank you to Renee for that informative session. Surviving a pandemic, that's us. We're gonna keep things moving. And join us again at 11 for Dr. Bruce Webb. That's part two. He's gonna break down the importance of sleep in building up your immune system. Some of us like to work late and long hours or even whole weekend. Uh, maybe that's you. Well, that's not good because that actually makes us sick. He's gonna take us through that. We need rest in our lives. Now friends, that's back at 11 with Dr. Webb. I'll chat to you soon.